Oh, sir. Captain Sal. Oh, it's like totally transparent. Yeah. Sexy. Would you wear that? Yeah. Yeah. I'll get it for you. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Legion? My name is Sal. I'm quarantined in my studio with COVID on Thanksgiving Day, and this is another expedition log. In this episode, we'll be visiting a mall that went from a simple courtyard to a two-level 1.3 million square foot powerhouse that remained successful and nearly bulletproof for over 45 years. I really never imagined that this place could close, and the history goes deep. As always, I hope you're all well out there and that my fellow Yanks had a wonderful Thanksgiving. For those of you who work in retail, I really hope you're getting some well-deserved rest after what was probably a crazy Black Friday. I'd also like to send a special shout out to my patrons and elite explorers who directly support me and my channel. You all rock and I appreciate every one of you. Today, I'd like you all to come take a walk with me and my dad, Captain Sal, through the Tri-County Mall in Springdale, Ohio, where we'll see footage from 2019 and then from my revisit in 2021 with a shocking decline that happened in just two years. So grab some leftover turkey and a drink. This one will be on the longer side. But first, a word from our sponsors. Surf Cincinnati and the Willy Wonka we have at home for Shilato's department store. Enjoy. Up. It's turkey time. <laughs> May I excuse? Forget the parade. Spend your holiday stuffing yourself with mouth-watering treats. What was it we had for dinner tonight? It's Thanksgiving, so eat your turkey. Don't be one. USA's Thanksgiving <laughs> Feast of Fun can be... I'm Willy Wonka, and I hope you'll come to see the Chocolate River, my chocolate factory, and all my friends in Chilitos downtown windows and 6 4 Santa Land. We'll be waiting. Welcome to the Tri-County Mall. The footage I'd like to show you is in two parts. First, we'll see the mall as it stood in 2019 during the DMOD summit where my dad randomly showed up. Then we'll revisit two years later to see a stark contrast in occupancy and maintenance. But this 63-year-old mall has a pretty long story, so let's jump right into the historical narrative. 
On Wednesday, July 27, 1955, it was announced that a new shopping center was to be constructed on a 75-acre tract of land at the northeast corner of Princeton and Kemper Roads, just north of Glendale. The shopping center plans called for a department store, a variety store, and a large supermarket surrounding 45 shops covering 400,000 square feet. A 30-acre parking lot would be paved to accommodate nearly 5,000 cars. Preliminary groundwork for the shopping center was completed by 1957, and it was announced that a Shilatoz would serve as the senior anchor on the site along with a few dozen stores. Work was scheduled to take about three years, and the mall would cost roughly $6 million. Is this a store? Yeah. Or just like a spot to hang out? Okay. <laughs> The Tri-County Shopping Center, built by Joseph Meyerhoff's real estate arm, Monumental Properties, had its ribbon-cutting and grand opening at 10 a.m. on Monday, September 26, 1960. A spokesman for the Meyerhoff company stated that, quote, there will be no circus, no rockets, no balloons, we're going at it like gentlemen, close quote. The mall was in a barbell-shaped configuration with its main open-air concourse flanked by two senior anchors, a two-story Pogues and a three-story Lazarus-owned John Shillitoe and Company, which locals just called Shillitoe's. When the Tri-County Shopping Center was opened, at the time it was the largest center developed by Meyerhoff, spanning 75 acres with 51 stores across a half a million square feet of selling space. While we have seen malls from 1.5 to 3 million square feet, at the time, Tri-County Center was a behemoth. It was comprised of 3 million pounds of roofing, 3 million pounds of steel, 56 million pounds of cement, 1 million bricks, and enough blacktop to pave a highway from Cincinnati to Fort Wayne, Indiana, with over 32 acres of paved surface. The mall cost $25 million to complete, and was named the Shopping Showplace of Ohio. On September 4, 1962, the Tri-County Shillitoe saw a completed renovation with an added fourth floor. The first floor was now called the Basement Store, offering a wide selection of discounted goods, with the three stores above it showcasing a more refined array of higher-end merchandise. In May of 1967, a Sears opened as Tri-County's third senior anchor. This two-level Sears was a new concept store for the company, including 52 merchandising departments, an auto center, and a restaurant. The store introduced a new contemporary aesthetic language, designed by the Chicago-based firm of Dunlap & Esgar, with the Cincinnati-based Monarch Construction Company serving as general contractor. The Sears would connect to the east end of the mall with a brand new climate-controlled enclosed concourse designed by architects Baxter, Hodel, Donnelly, and Preston. There was a vaulted ceiling with skylights along with hexagonal fountains, shrubs, and vintage lamps lining the walkway. No, 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 the one to the right. Door? Looks, I bet it's a store. Don't, I, no, don't do it. Just. Nothing in there? What happens? You just take the money. Well, that's done. Yeah. There's nothing here. Huh. Something used to be here. Yeah. Big ass store. They got some plants. What do you think of the skylight? The skylight itself is actually small. Oh, yeah, what is that? that? Of the yeah, we were curious why the yeah. thing. New tux is any. You need a new tux. I don't need a new tux. I got a blue suit. I ain't getting.
Cool. Hey, let me see that pin you're wearing there. Hold on, hold still. Oh, yeah. Let me see if it's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. It's pig strike a pose. By the late 1960s, not only was the United States at the peak of the space race with the Soviets, but we were also approaching the big bang of enclosed shopping malls across the US. As new super regional malls were announced throughout the country, the open air shopping centers began scrambling to compete with a rapidly evolving retail landscape by enclosing their concourses. In the greater Cincinnati area, the first to enclose was the Parmatown Mall, seeing its roof and air conditioning in the mid 1960s. This enclosure would bring heightened competition to the nearby Westgate Mall, who would enclose their concourse just a couple of years later. A few months after the Sears opened at Tri-County, Meyerhoff hired the same architectural firm from the 1967 expansion to enclose the rest of the mall, which was completed later in 1968. The following year, in 1969, the United States won the space race when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin took their first steps on the moon. One year later, after we landed two guys on the moon who walked around on the moon, the Tri-County Shopping Center had a sale for its 10th anniversary in 1970. By the end of September 1971, the Pogues received a massive renovation, adding a third floor to the department store. A few years later, the mall would see its second renovation in the fall of 1976. A short article in the September 30, 1976 Cincinnati Inquirer article describes the renovations made to Tri-County's main entrance. Quote, The location is the same, but the main entrance to Tri-County has taken on a new look. Now displaying a new kiosk area, the entrance includes eight stores redecorated in a contemporary decor of earth tones and autumn hues. A fountain with seats surrounded help you relax while dancing lights entertain your eyes from the flowing water. The mood is modern and alive, but still warm and pleasant to all." Close quote. By the mid-1970s, the Meyerhoffs were winding down real estate operations with what looks to be their final project beginning in 1978, which was the Meyerhoff Symphony Hall in Baltimore, Maryland. By this point, Joe Meyerhoff had been retired for about a decade, and he was now serving as president of the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra, along with abundant philanthropic efforts. One year after work began on Baltimore Symphony's Meyerhoff venue, the company decided to liquidate their monumental properties incorporated real estate arm. Monumental was sold off for $180 million. However, just before the sale, the Meyerhoffs unloaded their Tri-County Center to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States for $34.8 million on Tuesday, August 28, 1979. Moving into the 1980s, the mall had healthy occupancy, a full set of anchors, and a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed new owner who was ready to get to work. The first change came to the mall by 1982, when Lazarus' parent company, Federated, merged the John Shillito and Reich's companies, which saw a nameplate change with the concatenation of the two companies becoming a Shillito Reich's. This was an effort by Federated to capitalize on the reputation of two very profitable stores at the time, bolstering the image for newly merged stores without having to drop the namesakes for either of them. Two years after the Shillito Reichs merger, the Pogues Company, which had proudly served Cincinnatians for 120 years, was facing a shift in ownership. By this time, Samuel F. Pogue, who was then professor of musicology at the Cincinnati Conservatory of Music, was also vice president of sales and sales promotion for the Pogues Company. While the United States was in the midst of a recession, the Ohio Valley, too, was in a sharp decline, and stores like Pogues were seeing a massive decrease in profits. So, the company was sold off to New York-based Associated Dry Goods, who owned the L.S. Ayers department store. The transaction completed on November 1, 1984. At that point, all remaining Pogues mastheads were converted to Ayers, including the location at the Tri-County Shopping Center.
The mall would celebrate turning 25 by installing a brand new food court named A La Carte, with its grand opening on August 15, 1985. There were nine stalls in total, with eight occupied at opening. The eateries were Ancient Wok, Baskin Robbins, Chicago Hot Dog, Chili Supreme, Great Steak and Fry Company, One Potato Two, Pizza Hut, and Spinning Fork. The food court brought the total leasable area for the Tri-County Shopping Center up to 983,862 square feet. In all, there were 10 days of festivities for Tri-County's birthday, and there was a sweepstakes giving away worth over $7 million. There was a sock hop, along with a meet and greet with Boomer from the show Here's Boomer. I had to look up this show because I've never heard of it, so I got on IMDb, and here's the synopsis. Boomer meets a blind man whose guide dog has recently died. Boomer decides to be a substitute for the man who wants to pursue his dream of being a cyclist. Now, if I didn't see the picture of what this show's main character is, I'd be super confused that there was some guy who wanted to be a seeing eye dog for a blind guy. But it turns out that Boomer is a dog played by a mixed-breed mongrel named Johnny who got paid 3500 bucks per week and he had his own stunt double to do the dangerous stuff. I don't know if it was actually Johnny who was at the Tri-County meet and greet, but if any of you were there back in 1985 at the meet and greet for Boomer, let me know down in the comments. I'd also like to know how a meet and greet with a dog actually went. I guess people just got to go up to the dog and pet it or say hi to it or give it treats. I don't know. If you were there, let me know. A bit later in this episode, I'll discuss when JCPenney moved into the wall in the 80s, but they would eventually close, and just for a bit of positional context or situational awareness, this is where the JCPenney was when it was eventually demolished to create this awesome atrium. But we're about to finish up the tour from 2019, and my dad and I were going to finish up our cahoots inside the mall before we head over to Jungle Gyms for some other shenanigans. I won't be showing the Jungle Gyms footage in this episode, so if you do want to see what we got into over there, I'm going to drop that footage on my second channel called Quite Studios. It most likely will be out when this episode airs, I'll try my best, but once we finish up inside the mall, we'll get back to the footage I shot in 2021 to finish up the historical narrative. Pringles. You can get itty bits. You want to go downstairs? Let's go downstairs. Go downstairs. Go downstairs. Captain Self. Go in. So. So we're doing all this shit, and this guy's shit is all hanging out because 
Oh, it's straight, totally transparent. Yeah. Sexy. <laughs> Would you wear that? Yeah. Yeah. No question. <laughs> My second choice would be that. Literally. I'll get it for you. <laughs> How was that? No good? <laughs> no good? Burn the hairs of my nose. <laughs> I just have a piss. Hey, see, I told you, I wouldn't, I can't. Somebody pissed all over the chair, and I thought the fat guy's in the room and get the shit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, bring me back over to Macy's. What are you doing? What are you doing? Go. Let's go over there. I want to see what's up over there. Are you using gas? You should. Oh. Don't you have GPS in that thing? Yeah, it's right here. Jungle Gyms. I don't know what a Jungle Gyms is. Just put Jungle I, Gyms in I there. I can't just type in Jungle Gyms. Take me to Jungle Gyms. This is OG, brother. Hey, are you going to meet us at Jungle Gyms? No, we you. You just hang a right. Put in your GPS. <laughs> <laughs> There's a place the gold stars are out Where chili's so good, it'll make you shout Don't need much money, just your appetite Cause we've got the taste to make you feel all right Gold star, on, let me show you where it's at Gold star, on, let me show you where it's at Gold star, on, let me show you where it's at Gold star chili, I like it like that after Thanksgiving sale starts tomorrow. Shop airs first with extended holiday hours, 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Plus, save on exciting doorbusters, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Airs after Thanksgiving sale has entire stock savings of 20 to 50 percent. Plus, special savings on great gifts throughout every department. Ask about Airs holiday deferred billing. Don't miss Airs after Thanksgiving sale with entire stock savings starting tomorrow. That airs especially for you. Welcome back to the Tri-County Mall, now in 2021. As you'll see in this footage, the mall went through some intense deterioration since my last visit in 2019, which is the footage you just saw. But let's jump back into the history for this mall. We left off in 1985, right after Equitable Life built the a la carte food court. One year after the food court came through, Federated decided to shutter Shilato Rikes, its Cincinnati division, and fold the brand into Lazarus. As a result, in 1986, all Shilato Reich stores were converted to a Lazarus, including right here at the Tri-County location. During the 80s, Tri-County would start facing some serious competition, with the announcement of George Hareskew bringing the LJ Hooker Company over from Australia to build America's first super mall, Barrest Fair Mall, which would be just a nine minute drive west on 275 in Forest Park. If you'd like to see any of my work on Forest Fair, there's three fully produced episodes on what would eventually become Cincinnati Mills. You can check out X-Logs 30, 31, and 118. I'll put links down below. On July 22, 1987, it was announced that the McAlpin Company and JCPenney had committed to building a new mall with the Shopco Advisory Group, which would be located at the intersection of Princeton Pike and West Crescentville Road. According to the Shopco plans, the mall would be called Springdale Town Center and would contain 1.5 million square feet of leasable area. 
The mall would be anchored by a McAlpins and a J.C. Penney, and to dispel any concern about leaching anchors from Tri-County, Shopco senior partner Arnold Praver offered to sign a stipulation with the city that the new mall wouldn't accept a department store operating under the name Lazarus, Ayers, or Sears until 1999. This project, scheduled to be completed by 1989, greatly endangered Tri-County, since it was going to be built just 1.2 miles away which would have been a death sentence for the Tri-County Shopping Center. So with the news of the Forest Fair Supermall coming and multiple shopping centers being built along Kemper Road and Princeton Pike, Tri-County really needed to evolve. In 1986, the May Department Store Company purchased Associated Dry Goods in a stock swap valued at about $2.47 billion. Adjusting for inflation, in 2023, that deal would have been worth nearly $7 billion. Through this acquisition, the LS Ayers Department Store was now owned by May. For a number of years, Dallas-based JCPenney had been conducting market research in the greater Cincinnati area. Their studies and success at the Eastgate and Florence malls showed that the 1400 store chain could benefit by strengthening their position through other malls in Cincinnati. So JCPenney closed their Hamilton, Ohio location after a 68 year run and chose to expand into three malls. To execute this plan, Penny's struck a deal with the May Department Store Company to purchase three of their Ayers locations at the Kenwood Town Center, Northgate Mall, and Tri-County Shopping Center. By fall of 1988, all three heirs were converted to JCPenney, and by May, it was announced that Springdale City Council had rejected Shopco's bid to build their massive mall. With this news, Tri-County could breathe a sigh of relief and get plans in place to tackle the future. On Tuesday, October 18, 1988, Equitable commenced a super aggressive and ambitiously dramatic $80 million expansion for the Tri-County Shopping Center. The plans detailed the addition of a completely new second floor to the mall with a bold center court that had a massive fountain and a fan-shaped skylight. To get up to the new concourse, a glass elevator and banks of escalators and staircases would be installed. The existing nine-stall food court would be replaced by a 475-seat food court with 12 eateries on the new second floor, and a new department store would be built to accompany the existing Lazarus, Sears, and JCPenney. While the work at Tri-County was underway, Forest Fair Mall would celebrate its grand opening on March 1, 1989. Cincinnati Post reporter Ken Wilson penned an article just two weeks after the grand opening at Forest Fair, which posed the question on everyone's mind. Was Forest Fair a threat to local malls? The article went on to say that there had been a noticeable decline at Tri-County since the renovations began. Mark Anderson, manager of Black Diamond Formal Wear at Tri-County, was quoted saying, quote, The construction is hurting us more than the new mall. If the construction wasn't happening right now, it might make a difference, close quote. The article concludes with Northgate Mall manager Don Whitkind saying, quote, Competition has not been bad for us. In fact, so far, it's helped, close quote. Further illustrating that the key for Northgate Mall in battling Forest Fair was its own remodeling project. On May 3, 1990, Tri-County's new food court opened amidst the ongoing redevelopment. The mix of 12 eateries was named Cafe Express, and there was a Caribbean-themed celebration over two days to ring in the occasion. They had palm trees, live reggae and steel drum bands, balloon sculpting, and a summer fashion show. Why the Caribbean theme? I have no idea. But they did have a sweepstakes to win a trip to Cancun, Mexico, so there's that. 
But in a first for any U.S. mall, possibly any mall in the entire world, Tri-County's Cafe Express accepted food orders by fax machine. You want a cheeseburger? Send Tri-County a fax. They also offered a sort of catering service for office parties or groups of 20 or more. You want an office party catered by Tri-County? Send a fax. Have any of you local to this mall ever sent a fax back in the day to order some food here? Let me know down in the comments, because that's something I think we need to bring back. After two years of work, the Tri-County renovations were completed and the mall would begin the celebration with a black tie pre-opening party on Wednesday, October 24, 1990, which featured entertainer Suzanne Summers. Tickets for that event cost $75 each. Now formally renamed as the Tri-County Mall, it would have its grand opening on Thursday, October 25, 1990. In all, the project brought more than 100 new stores to the mall, along with a quarter mile of blue and green skylights, its center court stage and fountain, and a video sculpture with 35 TV screens. The first phase redevelopment project for Tri-County Mall cost $85 million, and set to begin shortly after the grand reopening was the development of a fourth senior anchor, which would be a McAlpins. The 240,000 square foot McAlpins had its grand opening and ribbon cutting ceremony on August 6, 1992, serving as Tri-County Mall's fourth senior anchor. The store featured reflective tile floors and a salon with three European style spas, a second floor junior's shop with bright neon lights and more than 80 video monitors to give the kids that high tech 90s feel. The mall entrance to the men's shop resembled a Bond Street haberdashery and the architects who designed the department store were Baxter, Hodel, Donnelly, and Preston, the same firm who brought the original enclosure to Tri-County Shopping Center back in 1967. As Tri-County was enjoying its incredible success of the huge renovation, Forest Fair up the street was in trouble. Just months after opening, it had lost half of its anchors, and it was foreclosed on in 1991. While the initial cost to build Forest Fair was nearly a quarter billion dollars, it was sold in 1995 for only $36 million. However, back here in Springdale, Equitable decided that it was time to unload Tri-County after its successful renovation to make some of that cash back and to get out of Dodge for what seemed to be a declining interest in retail coupled with an oversaturation of malls. The nearly fully occupied Tri-County Mall was sold to Argo Funds, which was a joint venture between the O'Connor Group, who was a New York-based pension fund advisor, and J.P. Morgan Securities. The sale was completed on June 30, 1997 for $147 million, which was $10 million more than the mall was appraised for just before the sale. One year after the mall was sold, on May 18, 1998, McAlpin's parent company Mercantile Stores was acquired by Arkansas-based Dillard's in a deal worth $2.9 billion. Shortly after the sale, McAlpin's nameplates were changed to Dillard's, including the location at Tri-County Mall. As the mall boldly and confidently survived Y2K and entered the new millennium, it was poised to be in the top three successful malls around Cincinnati. At this point, Argo wanted to cash out and started shopping the mall around. By October 13, 2002, it was reported that the New York-based Blackstone Group had shown interest in purchasing a trio of malls for $425 million, which included the Southdale Center in Minneapolis, Dakota Square in North Dakota, and the Tri-County Mall here in Springdale, Ohio. The deal would close in early January 2003, making BlackRock the new owners for Tri-County. 
It was also around this time that Federated Department Stores would rebrand Lazarus to a dual masthead in another department store concatenation, now known as Lazarus Macy's. BlackRock would put them all up for sale one year later, and in 2004, it was reported that Philadelphia-based Priot was showing interest in purchasing them all. The deal fell through by summer later that year, and by February 9, 2005, a deal was closed to sell them all for $184 million to New York-based Thor Equities. One month after the sale, Federated was in the process of converting its portfolio to the Macy's nameplate. And on March 6, the Lazarus Macy's at Tri-County became a Macy's. Despite nearly full occupancy at Tri-County, they were facing reinvigorated competition at Forest Fair, which had been picked up by the Mills Corp in 2002. Forest Fair received a full renovation and rebranding in August of 2004, now called Cincinnati Mills. So Thor Equities announced that they'd like to put up about $15 million into Tri-County to keep it up to date and competitive against good old Cincy Mills. On July 30, 2005, JCPenney would shutter its space at Tri-County, leaving the mall without an anchor for the very first time. Thor Equities thought about filling the space with another anchor, but ultimately they decided to demolish the structure and build a brand new mall entrance with a grand glass atrium, which was announced on March 12, 2006. A couple of months later, the mall would be sold to a joint venture between Diversified Realty and Coventry Real Estate. Multiple malls were part of that deal, and Diversified paid a total of $226 million for the acquisition. By November of 2007, the $10 million renovation to the former JCPenney space was completed, which introduced an Ethan Allen furniture store and Crazy City, which was an indoor theme park that had go-karts, a climbing wall, mini golf, and other rides. A few months later, a BJ's restaurant would join the new atrium space in February of 2008. Now, despite seemingly positive changes at Tri-County, the entire country was in the throes of the Great Recession and financial crisis of the late 2000s. Occupancy at Tri-County, along with most other malls around the country, was falling sharply on the other side of the recession. To make matters more difficult, a curfew was put in place in 2010, which disallowed anyone under the age of 18 to be in the mall after 4 p.m. on Fridays and Saturdays without a parent or adult guardian. Locals blamed this for the decline at Tri-County, but I don't see it. Mall brats aren't coming to the mall with stacks of cash to buy stuff at Ethan Allen. They're just going to the mall to hang out with other mall brats. They were not the reason for the decline. The mall would continue to decline, and by 2013, the bank had foreclosed on the property and placed it up for auction. They found a buyer in the Singapore-based Singhai Group Limited, who purchased the Tri-County Mall in July of 2013 for $45 million. Shortly after this sale, Dillard's would rebrand their store at Tri-County to a Dillard's Clearance Center. On June 4, 2015, Tri-County Mall manager Michelle Quick announced a $35 million project to revitalize the mall. The plans showed their intent to build multiple out-parcel tenants to redesign the streetscape along Princeton Pike and to relocate mall tenants in an effort to rebuild confidence among the greater Cincinnati residents. To me, this sounded like a way to distance themselves from the mall interior as a preliminary way to eventually redevelop the entire mall in the future. But they began work on a new men's warehouse which was moving from inside the mall along with a new Chipotle and Starbucks.
By October of 2015, the brand new $350 million Liberty Center Mall opened about 10 miles north of Tri-County, which would feature a Dillard's as one of their senior anchors. Tri-County management felt they couldn't compete and that it would be redundant to have the same anchor space in such a small proximity. So the Dillard's Clearance Center at Tri-County was shuttered by the end of 2015. In the next few years, more inline tenants would vacate the mall, and major retailers were facing a huge slump in sales. In 2017, Sears had closed more than 350 stores, with another 100 announced to be closed in 2018, of which the Tri-County Mall location was included, which shuttered its doors on August 5. I showed up in 2019 with my buddies for the DMOD Summit and my dad, who randomly showed up from Kentucky, but inline tenants were still fleeing, especially near the food court, which was devoid of any eateries by this point. The mall would close temporarily due to the pandemic, but with Macy's remaining as the sole senior anchor, the mall reopened some months later. But on January 5, 2021, Macy's announced a three-year plan to eliminate 125 locations across the country. Security's pretty cool here. If you work security and you're seeing this video, you positively rock. The Macy's at Tri-County would spend a few months liquidating the store and would shutter by April, leaving the mall extremely vulnerable without any anchors. I showed up again in June of 2021 to film the footage you're seeing right now, perplexed as to how far the mall had fallen since my last visit. On Wednesday, December 15, 2021, Springdale City Council voted to advance a $1 billion project to demolish the Tri-County Mall and redevelop the over 75-acre site in a five-phase schedule which would take between 10 and 12 years. They plan to construct up to 20 residential buildings with about 2,600 housing units, along with another 39 buildings meant for offices, bars and restaurants, entertainment, recreation, hotels, and more. 15% of the site would be green space, and the existing garages are planned to be preserved. It's an ambitious proposal, but it does have locals and local government pretty excited, and it would be the biggest project the city of Springfield has ever seen, so I really hope it happens. The Tri-County Mall was sold in March of 2022 to a joint venture between Texas-based Market Space Capital and Park Harbor Capital for $37 million. This was the firm that proposed the redevelopment plans, which were unanimously approved by the time they finalized their purchase of this mall. What in the hell is this? What the hell is this? Is this like a children's driving? School or something? What? Is this seriously a children's driving school? Because if it is, that is awesome. They unveiled further details of the redevelopment plan, and the new name for this development would be called Artisan Village, which would see the first phase introducing the residential properties. Two months after the sale, the Tri-County Mall was permanently closed on May 15, 2022, and it currently sits abandoned and awaiting demolition and redevelopment. I'd like to thank all of you for watching my video and spending some time walking with me through this awesome mall. While on one hand, I'm always sad to see these malls die. The plan for Tri-County's redevelopment, though, will create a ton of new jobs for the area, and that's always preferable. If any of you locals out there watching this hear of news surrounding the redevelopment to Artisan Village, please let me know down in my comments. I always love to hear from anyone local about these places. Thanks again to my patrons and elite explorers for sticking with me through these years. You all make these episodes possible. This episode will be the final production in my current studio, and I'll be moving to a new house in December, so I'll do my best to get my next episode out to you all as soon as I can. Stay tuned to my social media for updates. I'm on Facebook and Twitter or X, Instagram and threads, but the best way to contact me and find out what I've got cooking is through my Discord server, home of DMOD. Just head to discord.gg dmod, answer a few questions from a moderator, and you're in.
Links to all of my social media and Discord are down in my description below. I'll be back as soon as I moved into the new pad with Xlog 120, which will cover the Upper Valley Mall, along with the new Xlog side quest on my second channel, showing the hijinks and cahoots I got into with my dad over at Jungle Gyms. Make sure to sub over there, I've got some new things planned to release, including a bunch of new raw footage from already published Xlog episodes. But in the meantime, please take care of yourselves out there, Legion. Stay safe, and have a fantastic day. holiday stuffing yourself with mouth-watering treats. What was it we had for dinner tonight? It's Thanksgiving, so eat your turkey. Don't be one. USA's Thanksgiving <laughs> Feast of Fun can be... I'm Willy Wonka, and I hope you'll come to see the Chocolate River, my chocolate factory, and all my friends in Chilitos downtown windows and 6-4 Santa Land. We'll be waiting.